Good afternoon and thank you for tuning into Voters Dilemma. My name is Kitty Wishobete and today we have many controversial topics, opinions and questions about the 2019 national election that took place on the 8th of May. Our reporters were very busy over the last week covering the elections in Makanda. In particular, we looked at what young people had to say. The IEC has reported that the number of young people registered to vote this year has shown its lowest numbers in years. From apathy to anarchy, today we look at the reasons why young people aren't racing to the polls. South Africa's Electoral Commission says it's all systems go for the May 2019 general elections. It has launched a campaign to try to encourage young people to go out and vote. The Independent Electoral Commission says it's deeply concerned about the high number of South Africans below the age of 30 that have not registered to vote. Former President of South Africa, Thabo Mbeki, has urged the youth to register to vote. At least 9 million people have not registered to vote this year, and the bulk of them are young people. According to the IEC, more than 4.5 million eligible young South Africans did not vote on the 8th of May 2019. Several explanations have been suggested as to why these young citizens chose not to cast their ballot. Commonly proposed reasons include apathy and frustration with the political system, feelings of alienation from political leaders, and the feeling that voting is not the best way to bring about change. We sat down with three of these young people and master's student Paul Ehlers to find out why the youth of South Africa is choosing not to vote. My name is Zenandim Dioza. My name is Larissa Jane Houston. My name is Chaka. Junior Munism Sonza. I vote did not vote this, this year. I chose not to vote because I felt like I wasn't informed in these elections. I don't have enough knowledge for me to cast a vote and put my trust in an entire party. I'm not 100% clued up on, you know, like the parties and the manifestos and everything surrounding that kind of thing. The problem is definitely authenticity. Um, where you look at po certain politicians of South African parties are the sorts of the quintessential, the classic politicians. And then I think that leaves a bad taste in the mouth because especially the youth, um, if you pardon the expression, they, they see through BS. I feel like if I were to vote for any of the political parties, they wouldn't bring about economic growth or social growth for any of the people in South Africa. And I understand that I'm meant to be a responsible citizen being a registered voter and do my research so that I can vote. But I think it goes a little bit more than that in the sense of I couldn't find a political party that I would want to affiliate with. Very hard to pick one side when you notice the fact that maybe the side that you relate to the most is only really good at bashing the other side. Personally, I don't want my kids to grow up in South Africa. The problem with South Africans, they get comfortable with um, below average treatment or like below average, you know, below average like expectations. I feel like a lot of the young people kind of neglect their responsibility in the sense of saying that I'm leaving as soon as I finish my degree, I'm going overseas, I want to be in another country and if I vote now, it's not going to make much of a difference because by the end of this year, I'm going to be gone, you know. And understandably so, especially the youth um, of all creeds and, and colours and cultures who say, you know what, as soon as I get my degree, I'm out of here. I'm going to uh, Europe or the United States or even to another African country. Um, I think that's a problem. I think it's understandable. For me, I, you know, this is the country of my skull, if I can put it that way. Wow, I admire the love for South Africa. Up next, we look at students at Broad's University and their thoughts on voting and representation. Thousands of South Africans voted on the 8th of May. However, the voter turnout dropped by 8% from 2014. The cause could be that young people were not engaged. Youth from Makanda explained their lack of engagement in this year's elections. I've decided not to vote. So I'm also not voting. This year I'm definitely not voting. I didn't vote because I don't really see the point. 
I don't think there's anyone to vote for. Are you people don't you vote by deserve your vote? Yeah, um, you know, and, like I'm tired of ANC. ANC has promised us a lot. You know, I don't like know who to vote for because no party is actually doing like something right. Like I honestly don't know who to vote for. I don't see the need to vote for um, parties who don't actually do anything for our country. And I haven't found the right party that I feel like would represent me and my needs as a young student and as a you know just a youth in general. We as um, a youth are not given the opportunity to actually to voice out our opinions. However, some young people had something to say about youth who aren't voting. Your vote is your say. You, what you say, you can ex the way, way, this is the only platform we can say. You, we, you, you can express what you want to say by voting. So I really feel for those who haven't voted. Because I feel good because I voted for someone who I feel uh, uh, can liberate our people. They are being very misinformed because they're not voting and they should definitely step up to the plate and show how they can make change because this is the only way that everybody is equal. I voted because I believe that uh, as a citizen, first of all, you need to vote. Uh, you need to be a responsible citizen and choose uh, your own leaders. So me, I actually voted. Uh, I'm not ashamed. It's not My vote is not a secret. Definitely I voted for the EFF. Youth representation seems to be the cause of no votes from young people. Nonetheless, there are different views on the issue. The ANC was formed by young people historically, so it, the youth has always been represented and continues to be represented. Even the DA and EFF and so on have got their own youth uh, formations within and in their structural uh, 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 structures. In the ANC, I have a few concerns with youth leadership, with youth representation in the higher structures of the ANC. And in the greater scheme of things, when you consider all the political parties, you will find that there are very few uh, young, 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 young leaders. Uh, I can uh, compliment the EFF for doing so. They have a full uh, leadership of young people. So youth is represented uh, in our political uh, party, even in our manifesto, uh, our 178 pages manifesto. Everything that is written there uh, is based on youth, uh, on jobs, uh, on jobs uh, even the tribunals, everything, even the fiscus on how the fiscus is going to work, it's based on youth. We will find out in the next national elections if youth representation will improve. With 48 parties running for the national election this year, it is quite understandable that many young people don't know who to vote for. We now go live to our reporter in the field, Zukanye. A very good afternoon to you. My name is Zukanya Madagana. I am reporting from the Rhodes University Library. Since the ANC has won the national elections, I want to find out how the young people feel about that. I am here on campus in Rhodes University. I'm going to ask young people how they want to be represented by the ANC and what is it that they are expecting from the ANC now that it's ruling South Africa. Excuse me, guys. Can I speak to one of you, please? Yeah. Sure. Um, you know that the ANC has won the national elections. Mm -hmm. How do you want the ANC to represent you as a young person and how and what is it that you are expecting from the ANC as a youth? Um, well, especially as a young person, I, I want the ANC to fix the economy. So I, I want an economy that um, fosters job creation and all of that because I don't want to, I'm, I'm a university student, don't want to study for six years and then end up unemployed. Um, I also want them to fix structural inequality and I also, I, I, I would love an educated government. Um, I want our ministers to be experts in their specific fields. So a minister of health should be a doctor, should come from a medical background. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, I don't understand how um, the cabinet can be shuffled the whole time and people who don't really know much about medicine or health or education are running departments like that and obviously the biggest one is corruption um, 
as a young person, I feel like I'm being cheated out of my future by the ruling party and I would just like them to be, you know, more efficient, more aware of the actual problems that people are facing in this country. All right, thank you so much for your time. Well, it seems like employment is a big issue. Governance is also a big issue. So as a youth in South Africa, it seems like young people are wanting free education. They want to be employed after graduation. They want um, the people who are ruling our state to be more um, informed about what they are doing. Like he said that um, if someone is going to be a minister of health, they need to come from a background where they've um, studied um, for being a doctor or being a nurse. Well, I'm taking it back to you in studio so that we can see how the conversation unfolds. It is quite clear that underrepresentation is an issue for the youth. The race is not only to the polls, as we saw with the Fees Must Fall movement, that youths are finding power in the streets. <laughs> This young generation was apathetic to politics. We just needed a time. And I think the, the mass fall movement was a time that has come. It was in 2015 when thousands of students took to the streets to protest for free higher education. The battle and quest for free higher education continues. A question remains, why is it that then so many young people aren't voting? before. Then go on as if money attention can go see pendul. If as a long as you are teen, as issues as a call young walk, the issues a big dollar the corn. Now see Ted and the allowances. I saw allowances got twenty nineteen only. Kukaba funda banga pate long in twenty seventeen. Up until now, see got alone. Student activist Sia Nulu holds that the ANC government cannot be trusted with bringing about meaningful change in higher education. On the other hand, Sabelo Madala holds a more optimistic view. And it's frustrating to find that the very same people who are protesting are now still voting for this government. If we want, if we want to see change, how are we going to get this change if we still have the same, you know, the same people ruling our country? No, because it's a Iska kulu after ge sivodi le because sivodi le so sine temba ge loko bana eh baza kusine disa eh uza kusine dis hulmende o kokele ya pemzanza free. Following the nationwide protests, many changes took place in the funding of tertiary education. Rhodes University funding manager Etienne Walters explains. There, there is a cost involved for everything, but but for families, uh, poorer families and stuff, the the presidential announcement means that those students now can come to university, they can get funding from the government, but that is not repayable. Um, back in 2017, 16, 15 and all the prior years, the government did make available funding for students, but at the end of the day, when the student goes into the job market, the student had to repay that funds back, back to the government. Uh, while there are some meaningful changes to the funding of tertiary institutions, it seems that both TVIT and university students are in agreement that we are yet to experience true free higher education. In the free education, we see a bullet in Dogbana in Zamezikor, no Holmenda Zenzai. But in the free education, a skyborne nam. It's not free education, this thing. It's free education, Nyana. It's just a way to keep you quiet. Because you've seen across the, the beginning of the year, students were protesting. Lungi Sima Tonsela died early this year because he was protesting for free education at Durban University of Technology. So where is this free education? With the entry of these fees must fall activists in parliament, many hope that there will be a positive uprising of students as they believe that these young parliamentarians will rally the mission of free higher education forward. Well, that was a thought-provoking piece. Although we see that young people still have a voice out there, there is still quite a disconnect between them and the polls. Up next, we look at how parents influence the voters' vote by looking at how politics start at home. What influences the political views of the youth? Is it their upbringing, their parents' political views, or is it the media that they consume? We spoke to Rhodes University students to find out where their political views may stem from.
Like I've always generally been against my father's political views and him mine. But so usually I'd always been reading my uh, party's manifestos and telling my dad, okay, listen, this is what we're planning on doing and not. We didn't really discuss what we read because most of the times, like I said, my dad and I, if we discuss what we read, it would end up in arguments. My father definitely influenced me in terms of my um, passion for the environment and, and my mom I think education is, would be her major push for what I look for in political parties. So looking at what parties have put forward in terms of education and what their policies are. My mom, well we actually spoke about this like before, during the election, before the day of, before the, day of the election. And I remember talking to her and I was like, I'm thinking of probably voting for the EFF. And she was just like so mad because she actually gives credit to the ANC for giving her the job, giving her the opportunity to go into the army because she didn't get the education. Both my parents didn't get the education they wanted during apartheid. We got spoken a lot to about apartheid when we were younger and kind of the, the legacies that still affect us today. So I think it, we never spoke as much about like contemporary politics, what's happening now, but I think when we were younger, we were very much made aware of, of, of our privileges um, as being a white middle class family and kind of where we came from in our family history. So she kind of gives everything, like she, owes, she feels like she owes them for giving them the opportunity to give us a better life. They were the main influence, obviously, but also I remember this one time when Nelson Mandela passed on, I don't know, I think it's just a thing that's always like, like as a black child, it's always like in you to think that like apartheid could, like if you don't vote with the ANC, then apartheid will come back. I think, I think a lot of it has to do with the, um, like this idea of like legacy politics and the fact that we still are voting with the mindset of we've just come out of democracy, we've just come out of apartheid. And obviously the people that have, that were the instigators for come um, for democracy um, are not going to be from our generation because it's over 20 years now. So I think until until that that mindset of voting voting like you would 25 years ago and not trying to shift the the voter mentality, I think it's it's going to stay like that. Yeah. The political climate in South Africa today leaves little room for the youth to draw a line between their own political views and the fears of their parents. We now move down to Albany Road as we look at what the community has to say about voting. While thousands of South Africans left their homes early this morning to vote for their favorite parties, Makana Recreational Hall, which is surrounded by colored townships, had few people. Residents cry out for not seeing the change, the lack of service delivery and lack of consideration of their needs. Others accuse this of being influenced by race. We will see where there's any, I don't know what can I say, any services of whether, whether they're going to produce anything. Because every year it's the same, it's the same promises and promises, but nothing happens. So we want to see a change. We want to see some things change in everything. Okay, there's nothing that we can see. You know, there's no changes happening. I know we'd like to see a bit more being done for us in terms of, you know, service delivery, you know, picking up all the, of the garbage needs to happen, you know, more frequently we need. Our potholes need to be taken care of. We can't drive here, our cars are being damaged. You know, that's a benefit. That's why I don't know we get it here, I will have a here. But for 25 years, it was for the ANC and there was nothing for anything else. Elke vote is promises, promises, empty promises, you see. That's why we vote for the day, want we will give you a chance. And see what can help for us. I don't know if it's true, because the declaration is always after the line. You see, we are always after. There's no other thing we can say. The declaration is before, the declaration is after, and the declaration is always after. What the white man or what the white man says. Easy. Ever the color is last, oh. and I think that is not on. South Africa is going backwards and not forward. Most of the people is gonna hate me for this, but I don't care. Is it true? Is it true? 
Zukanya Madagana, Rhodes Journalism School. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. We have all seen the dilemmas facing young people when it comes to voting and the elections. Unfortunately, that is all we have for today. This has been Voters Dilemma with me, Kitsi Wishobete. Goodbye and God bless.